Kevin Griffin from the Vancouver Sun has produced an article today. I went and checked it out, and they're talking with Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. He's the guy who equates potassium-40 with man-made radioactive isotopes, and he's doing it again. Kevin Griffin is the reporter. He doesn't bother fact-checking it. To your right, you can see the tsunami in updating the Fukushima Daiichi military industrial complex, directed energy weapons facilities, fuel uh, facility, I should call it, I guess, because that's what they do, they make isotopes for directed energy weapons. And Mr. Griffin has provided us with a map of what he claims is a representation of over 1,100 days of three melted reactors hemorrhaging into the ocean all day, every day. This graphic shows the spread of low-level radiation from Fukushima in Japan to the west coast of North America. Scientist Ken Busseler talks about the Citizen Scientist Program to measure coastal radiation. So what they're doing is they're going to keep you focused in on a single release. It's the equivalent of 300 tons of dye like you would see on St. Paddy's Day going into a river for a few minutes. Imagine 300 tons a day every day hemorrhaging into the ocean, 1,440 minutes a day, relentlessly into that ocean. Shortly after Abe's statement, the government revealed that approximately 300 tons of contaminated water were leaking from Fukushima's crippled nuclear reactors on a daily basis. There was a lot of damage at Fukushima. You can see the carnage to the right. And just let me update you on some of that. You can see the detonation, that's unit one, it detonated. And that's unit one, it lost its top. This was a 10-story building, and the reactor is 100% meltdown. Chernobyl, for comparison, was a 30% meltdown. This is unit two. This was 100% meltdown, it had a hydrogen explosion. This is unit three. Unit three, of course, is like the other two buildings. It also had uh, was 10 stories high in that regard. It had a 100% meltdown. Chernobyl, once again, was uh, one-third the size of any of these reactors. It was a 30% meltdown. These are 100% meltdowns and hemorrhaging into the ocean relentlessly, and there's no stopping it. Uh, of course, uh, imagine that the currents travel at one miles an hour. They will cross the ocean in 227 days, 24 hours a day, times 227, 5,500 miles. Uh, the jet streams will carry it in about three days at 100 miles an hour, 24 hours a day. Every 24 hours, 2,400 miles. So it doesn't take long to cross the ocean. And so what they're doing is they're going to keep you focused in on a single release, is what they're covering, and then a single release into the atmosphere. And then they're going to marginalize that because they say it dispersed. And if that's what happened, it would be fine, but that's not what happened. 300 tons of contaminated water were leaking from Fukushima's crippled nuclear reactors on a daily basis. It's continuing. As you can see to the right, you got to realize how really friggin' messed up that is, folks. That's a 100% meltdown. This was Mox fuel. Polonium is a man-made uh, radioactive element. It's a heavy element containing 94 protons. Pol Polonium-239 is produced in fu fuel containing uranium-238. Polonium-239 is actually the material of choice for nuclear weapons. The critical mass of polonium-239 is oh. pretty low. There is a lot of polonium from Cold War sitting around, which was made to produce a nuclear weapon. And at some point, uh, of course, because it is a fissile element, uh, there was an idea of mixing polonium with uranium to uh, make uh, fuel for nuclear reactors and actually burn polonium uh, as a fuel instead of keeping it a stockpile, which can be used, for example, uh, for weapon production. So one of the reactors in Fukushima contained a mixed oxide nuclear fuel, uh, which was a, a mixture of plutonium and uranium. The, the issue is that element of po uh, plutonium is actually highly toxic when inhaled. It's less toxic when ingested, but animal studies found, uh, found that, that accumulated dose of few milligrams of plutonium per kilogram of tissue is lethal. The traces of uh, plutonium uh, were reported to be found at uh, Fukushima a couple of weeks ago. Then the reports about plutonium uh, stopped and having, there was no talk recently about uh, any presence. So I think that the origin is uh, unclear right now. But uh, uh, this is a certainly a concern in the reactors which are using mixed oxide fuel. This, this was weaponized uh, missiles that were remilled. And that also had a detonation. Now, number three, uh, that detonation is considered a nuclear detonation at Fukushima. And that's number three again. Now, 
Mr. Griffin, Kevin Griffin, has some comments down there, and one of the comments was, do you own a oven, a toaster? Have you sat in front of a fire and you're in the sun before? All of those are giving off radiation. That kind of radiation is not man-made, radioactive, weaponized, ionized isotopes. That's just that's uh, radiant heat. Radiant and radiation is two different things completely, and that's a very bold statement to make that they can't quantify and they can't explain it, yet they're trying to. I think it's reprehensible uh, that somebody would even try to say something like that, and I'm very suspicious about that comment. The building to your right is 100% meltdown again. You can see the building is missing. All the fuel pools are missing. There was 1,500 35 bundles with 80 rods in a bundle. The rods are 12 feet long and a half a rod is enough to kill all the mammals on the planet after it killed the humans. And there's 122,000 rods in a pond. It's very grave, very serious stuff. This is Unit 3, the fireball, the detonation from the nuclear explosion. And that's a much better look at it. And right alongside of it is Unit 4. That had a detonation Two, and I got some pictures of that here. Let me bring that into the... That's a better picture of Unit 4. That had detonations and two massive fires in a spent fuel pool. Now, think of a spent fuel pool. This is supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time, so those uh, isotopes and particles and atoms can't escape. Of course, uh, they put the fuel pools on top of the reactors, and when the reactors went, so did the fuel pools. So they released an amazing amount of radioactive material into the environment. This is continuing to release into the environment. They can't contain it. Nobody's going to get in there with scaffolding or cutting torches and do anything to that building. That's Unit 4 again. As you can see, there's nothing left of that building. Nothing. Let me come back over to Ken Busler's propaganda machine. This man is going around. He hasn't stopped. He came on board as soon as Fukushima happened. He dropped everything he was doing for Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and has not stopped. He's been on every radio, every TV. He gets every medium out there. I get nothing. I tell you the truth, nothing but the truth. This guy compares potassium-40, which is homeostasis. <laughs> Homeostasis is a basic idea in biology, and what it is, is an organism's ability to keep a constant internal balance, no matter what's going on in the environment. It's insignificant, like a banana, like walking in the sunshine, like the fire. These are homeostasis. You can't absorb any more potassium-40 than your body already has. Ken Buesler is going around equating that with man-made radioactive isotope, which is cumulative. You know, there are about 12 becquerels of potassium-40 in bananas. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. So they have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean by the operating license of TEPCO. Our plants have similar things. They're allowed to have certain levels in the ocean. That's because these are considered safe. In that article on the bottom of this one here, he says the water will be tested for cesium-134 and cesium-137, both of which were released at Fukushima. So whenever you see cesium, you got to include 30 times more strontium-90, plus uranium, plus plutonium. He says cesium-134 has a half-life of two years. They don't bother putting it in. That uh, There's no such thing as a half-life. You know, that's how they confuse you and fool you. You got to multiply it by 10. So a half life is 20 years, not two years. And the 137 is 300 years, not 30 years. But you got to remember what they're doing to you here is they're basing everything up on a single release. And then they make this uh, presentation on the Vancouver Sun that is a misrepresentation. This graphic shows the spread of low-level radiation from Fukushima in Japan to the west coast of North America. They, they shouldn't be allowed to have that article up there. They should have to take that article down. Buesler says, Fukushima produced two radioactive plumes. The first went into the atmosphere in a northeasterly direction. So he's implying there was a single release, right? Went into a northeastern direction. It hasn't stopped at Fukushima. It's St. Paddy's Day, like when you pour dye into the river, 1,440 minutes a day, all day, every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and there's no stopping in the future that we know about. We don't know how 
to deal with this. Nobody on the planet knows how to deal with this. How can you have no or little radiation when it's hemorrhaging into the ocean nonstop? Imagine if a river was 4,000 miles long and you got a top of the river and you poured in 300 tons of doy all day, every day, you never stop. 300 tons every day of doy, hardcore doy that don't disappear, that lives for thousands of years. And after over three years, you got in a helicopter and you went down that river a couple of thousand miles. Do you think you would find a spot where the doy never penetrated and everything? All the estuaries, all the rivers, all the drinking water, all the rain falling, all the communities, all the farmland wouldn't be affected by all that doy for one friggin' second? Imagine that going up into the jet streams where it only takes three days to get across onto your continent. Do you think that that doesn't have a factor, that you can't burn this? You can't even pour acid over something that is contaminated and decontaminated because all you do is liberate that isotope, that atom, that particle. And, and so this whole thing, the, and the next plume was thought, was through the ocean in a more easterly direction. In a more easterly direction, he's implying there's a single release into the ocean. It never stopped hemorrhaging into the ocean. It just never stopped hemorrhaging into the ocean. A nuclear crisis. Tonight, Japan on the verge of classifying a toxic water leak at the crippled Fukushima nuclear... It's outrageous that reporters like Kevin Griffin can't do the basic research and correct this and puts this up there as accurate. That he just takes Woods Hole's word for it without bothering to fact check it. What is the sense of having media if they're not going to bother fact checking it? Why would you even want to consider ever using the Vancouver Sun again if they're not going to bother fact checking? Because that's what they do. They don't bother fact checking. They put out whatever these people say and there's no one to hold them accountable. It's outrageous. It can't continue. That's Unifor on the right hand side. Look at it. Now, they're showing you pictures on CBC and everywhere else, including the Vancouver Sun, of that billing, and it's in mint shape. But that's the official release there. They can't get in there. It's sprayed with projectiles from the detonations of the other reactors. This building detonated itself. just rods all over that site. ...roof and sent debris flying into this pool filled with nuclear fuel. And you can see what CBS is showing us, what Seth is showing us as... The unit four and that doesn't add up you can't actually physically get in there and work uh, without dying two weeks later at, if you're lucky to live that long uh, this is neutrons and x-rays you can't get in there what you see up there in the corner is probably photoshop you see two workers up there that could have been the fukushima 50s but the guy there got no mask on and let me see if i can zoom in you can see this guy, it looks like a guy, he's got no mask on, and this guy's got no features. So this is fake, that's what that is, that's a fake picture. I'm telling you right now that, you know, if you do your basic understanding of um, radioactive uh, disasters, you know that these are hot places, they can't get inside of it. Unit 1, that one right there, is a million sievers outside the gates, and so Unit 2 is right alongside of that. It detonated. Look how hot it is in there. It's 100% unit no, down. Uh, 4 and 3, there's 4 right there and 3 right there. These are, uh, Unit 4 was a detonation, and fuel caught fire in the fuel pools. Remember, all nuclear power plants, fuel pools boil off about 100,000 uh, liters a day into your community of radioactive material that goes on till the end of time. You can't decommission a power plant. And what they're doing is they're pretending that there was just two little releases and then they're basing all their assumptions up on that and indoctrinating goodwill people with this information. And this is wrong in every way possible. Fukushima has not stopped hemorrhaging into that ocean. It's not going to stop. Nobody can stop it. A nuclear crisis. Tonight, Japan on the verge of classifying a toxic water leak at the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. Think about the peer review academic studies. I've covered them before from Yale and Harvard and Berkeley and Stanford. And they show how the dust alone, which is a, heav a much heavier, bigger particle, will travel right across the ocean and cause pollution in North America and linger in North America. You know, if you got a lot of money, you can go out and buy these peer review academic studies and look at them yourself. That really big particles make it across the ocean. The Trans Pacific transport of the pollutants is 
common knowledge, okay? Also done in another study of the importance of injection heights of biomass burning emissions. These are really big particles in the boreal forest. Think about St. Paddy's Day. Think about how it hemorrhages into uh, the ocean from Fukushima. It looks just like what you're looking at there. It's nonstop, 1,440 minutes a day. There's no break. It's not like it's going to disappear when it gets in the ocean. It doesn't biodegrade into the ocean, okay? They expect in 20 years the cesium is going to make its way right back to Japan. This is radioactive isotopes. It doesn't degrade. It, it kind of assimilates into that environment, but it doesn't go, it doesn't disappear, and it doesn't get weaker. It lives its entire life, not half-life, but its entire radioactive life. Think about their hiring the unskilled and the destitute for Fukushima cleanup. Think about that. That's who we're putting our fate in. If there's nothing going on there, why are they hiring the unskilled and the destitute and still cleaning up Fukushima if there's nothing wrong there? They got three melted reactors and missing fuel pools. They had detonations that sprayed nuclear rods for up to two miles over that site. You can never clean it up. Health Canada calls 300 times background levels of iodine 131 minutes. Let me think about that. 7,500 becquerels is normal background potassium-40 for water, but they're going to equate that with man-made radioactive material. Multiply that by 300, and bear with me, and look at your numbers. Two and a quarter million becquerels. Now, that came with 132 iodine, 133 iodine, plus uranium, plus plutonium. Whenever you see cesium, you got to include 30 times more strontium-90. The iodine-132 is 10 times more effective at ionizing your thyroid glands. I want you to think about a study done by Health Canada. Evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume. The Fukushima plume over southwestern British Columbia. Fukushima plume. This is Health Canada, okay? And think about some of this stuff that they're talking about. And they flew along the coastline and they had a radiation monitoring every, oh, hang on. Several studies on the radioactive releases from Fukushima nuclear power plants is already exist. The plume provided a nice opportunity to test radioactive detection capabilities. This is our government here in Canada. The study focused on the arrival of the plume, and so that will wash back out into the ocean on the coastline. That's why Ken Buesler was saying don't take sediment and don't take seaweed because they accumulate and bioaccumulate radioactive materials. You only want it to water. Pretty slick. We just ask you, try not to get any sediment or seaweed inside of it. So go out deep enough to get a clean sample. This was an aerial survey, March the 28th and the 18th, 2011, and they flew a line along British Columbia. And they discovered a radioactive plume right along the entire coast. That an updated the coat, it deposited radioactive atoms and particles all over the coastline, all the way into America, right across North America. And that stuff ain't gonna go anywhere till it runs its course, which is hundreds and millions of years, depending on the kind of stuff. Uh, Health Canada hid this away from everybody. Do you seen the spikes? Now, they detected those spikes on the 19th and the 20th of March, 2011, and they didn't bother telling people to stay indoors during these spikes. They let all the children walk to school. They let their family members go out and walk their pets. They let their children walk to school. They let their wives and their daughters and their sons and their aunts and their uncles be exposed to that and never told anybody for a paycheck. And this is Health Canada on the right-hand side study. In all likelihood, the plume originated from Japan. Gee, of course, that's the way they write stuff anyway, right? But it's very telling that Ken Buesler is out there putting that propaganda out there. Now, I do want to put this in perspective from health safety. I'm not a, a health physicist by any stretch. Kevin Griffin should have to take that article down. This is yelling fire in the theater, and people will get hurt because they don't know any better. It's criminal. I'm going to assume he doesn't know any better because I don't want to think that he knows better. I really don't. But to me, it's very offending that Ken Buesler is getting away with this over and over and over and that Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution is nothing more than a nuclear PR firm and it's very dangerous that he's out there getting the exposure and indoctrinating our loved ones and manipulating them.
You can't even have a conversation with people because they heard about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and they're going to give him $500 so he can dump your water down a hole in the floor because he's not going to tell you the truth. That's not what he does. He tells you potassium-40 is like man-made radioactive material. You know, there are about 12 becquerels of potassium-40 in bananas. There are levels of concern for drinking water in the U.S. It's about 8,000 in those units. They have a regulatory limit of about 90,000. So they're allowed by law to put up to about 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean by the operating license of TEPCO. Our plants have similar things. And if you eat a banana with potassium-40 or drinking water potassium-40, you off-gas the same amount because your body can only hold so much potassium-40, but it will accumulate cesium, will accumulate uranium, will accumulate plutoniums, dystrontiums, and their doctors and 1,100 dangerous radioactive man-made isotopes that have been distributed all over our coastline. Remember, no matter what isotope it is, it didn't travel alone. Which one you hear is about, that means all the other ones came too. It's that simple. It's heartbreaking that I got to do this. It's heartbreaking that the media, that people like Kevin Griffin, that the Vancouver Sun can't do a little bit of fact-checking. It's really heartbreaking, and that's why we got no choice but to come out and call him out. It's the last thing I want to do. But it's the most important thing I, I can do. I got no options. I'm just so tired of it. But I don't think I'll ever stop. Because the option is they're going to get away with this. And it's not right. We need a debate. We need solutions. And we need to do the right thing. And that's deal with it. It's not going to go away. It's just going to get worse. It accumulates. Every time it rains, everything else, it accumulates. Okay? Two million particles for each of the ten simulations frightening. The definition of stupid, knowing the truth, seeing the truth, still believing Ken Buesler and the Vancouver song. Take care folks. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, That's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.